Hey guys, Omni here. Welcome back for episode 11, the penultimate episode of the final season of Ted Lasso. I'm not ready, man. I really am not. Last episode was a wildly like whiplash heavy episode with everything that happened in the in the with between Nate, between Keely, between Roy, pretty much everybody except for Ted had like this just whole turnaround in the last episode, especially with that moment between Rebecca and with Rupert, which kind of threw me for a loop. Like, honestly, like I said in that reaction, it was like, it felt like we missed an episode or there's a whole lot of stuff that happened on the back end that we weren't there for that just really made a lot of those scenes a little weird. But where it sets our characters, I am highly excited for, and especially to see how we follow up on it. And especially with where we left Nate, oh my lord, him and the violin, his father, all of that beautiful, Rebecca laying into that board with a Khufu and all those other rich fucks was amazing. Uh, and especially with this weird out of left field humanizing of Rupert, which honestly is, I mean, it helps. It it shows that like everything else in the show, everybody isn't pure evil. You know, we still have the rest of this, you know, playoff, the series or whatever to conclude. We got Man City to tackle, all the same. So I, mm, we'll see, man. There's still a lot to resolve in these last two episodes. And these last two episodes are long, and I'm excited. But with that all said, guys, let's get ready to hop into this episode. If you want to see the full reaction, as always, you can check it out over on Patreon or for Gummy Rebel's channel, get you access as well. It is in watch along format, so you will need your own footage to sync up the time codes and reaction the entire episode. Over there, you get the same thing for all the other shows and movies that we cover in the channel. You also get to suggest and vote what movies we react to each month. Right now, we have a poll up for what show is going to be replacing this once we reach the finale. I'm leaving it open until the day that this posts to give you guys ample time to cast your votes. We got monthly Q&As, behind scenes footage, to try to make it worth your while since you're going to channel. But guys, at the end of the day, I really appreciate it. Enjoy this reaction. To least leave a like, drop a comment, subscribe if you're not already. Huge shout out to the team over at Prepper for helping me edit down these highlights for you guys here on YouTube. And with that all said and out of the way, let's go ahead and hop into episode 11. Mom City, here we go. Hello there. Hey there. Hi, Ted. Howdy. Hey, Ted. Good luck this weekend. Aww. Hey, Miss Barnaby. Rough night? I tell you, he's not rough. It is his son. <laughs> Amen to that. What's up, folks? There she is. Hey, my God. Don't go all cocky and fuck up that street killer. What street? Go this one. <laughs> I love this. Like, if you parallel this with how we started off, I love the night and day bit it, that it is. Mom? Oh. Hey, oh. His mom was the last person I expected. When I saw Mom City, I immediately thought we would be, it would be like Jamie's mom or something like that. You know, considering he used to play for Man City and seeing her come in, this whole thing with the father, we've never seen the mother. That's what I thought. I didn't even like consider that it could be Ted's. Don't think the cleaners oh. have to clean the floor. Whoa, oh God, he jump scared me. Oh, so why do we put the chairs on the tables? The patriarchy. Okay. Oh, well, I'll just, um... I don't know. That's a good question. Well, I mean, it makes it so much easier to sweep and vacuum. I mean, when I ran our club and stuff and we cleaned up the night, like, obviously, we just put everything on top of the table so we could vacuum under everything and sweep Maratti and all that. Nathan Shelley? I don't know if there's, Maratti. like, another magic region. No such man exists. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God, it's true. Oh, oh they're wow. here. How did you go through your money so fast? Did you get addicted to the Lambler? <laughs> like working here. Like spending time with my girlfriend. Uh, um, she was right there. I swear she exists. Oh, that was my girlfriend. Mm -hmm. she, what are you guys doing here? We want you to come back to Richmond. Oh. You do? Yeah, bro. Because <laughs> this year, it's sad as fuck. <laughs> It'll be good to have you back. And the whole team talked about it and it was unanimous. Except for Bumper Catch. Who <laughs> oh, abstained because he's passionately anti democratic. <laughs> Fair enough. I'll ask you guys to come here to get me to come back. Oh, I know Ted doesn't know about it. Yeah, no, Oof. we wanted to ask you to see if you actually wanted to come back before we approach Ted. Sorry, guys, I just don't think it's a good idea for me to come back to Richmond. So thank you. He wants Ted to be the one to reach out. 
Can I have 75 kebabs to go? Uh, yeah, oh, yeah. No, of course. Um, chicken, pork, or lamb. Or, or 25 of each. <laughs> Aww. This is cute. He, he needs it to be Ted. What are all these crazy symbols on your oven, Da? Well, the one with a line under the nuclear power symbol, that's for making cookies and chicken. The uh, three squiggly lines let you burn a frozen pizza. And then the key symbol there, that makes the whole thing beep until Beard comes over. <laughs> Uh, I just always want to see England, so I booked this trip as a little Mother's Day gift to myself. I mean, how long you been here? Just a week. A week? Where the heck are you staying? <laughs> what? This adorable little hostel. Ma. No, I met so many Australians. They are backpacking through Europe. Uh -huh. So much sex. <laughs> uh, I'm not a hassle. You're not a hassle, Mom. Okay, please stay here. Okay. Okay, good. All right. Now, look, I got to get to work. All righty. Have fun. You want to tag along? Well, I don't want to be in your hair. Mom, I want you in my hair. Aww. Okay, thank you. I would like that. All right, good. You don't have to bring your suitcase, Mom. Right. Okay. <laughs> Why would she even... Why? <laughs> yeah, just direct your feet that mm. way, Mom. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what a... Fucking curveball to throw right here at the end. Matches in a row with two games left. You just four points off Manchester City. Whoa! What a streak! Am I dreaming? Uh, well, if you are, please don't wake up. And if this is the Matrix, don't unplug me. Uh, Fair enough. Uh, yeah, better Trent. <laughs> better Trent. He keeps changing it. How does it feel to be named Premier League Player of the Month? Uh, yeah, feels good. I guess, but it's um, it's really the, the team making me look good. So. I should be doing a better job of making them look good, really. Aww. So, yeah, makes me makes me feel bad. Ooh, <laughs> interesting. Uh, Jamie also led the league in assists this month, so he's done plenty to make his teammates look good. Yeah, but they're the ones who took all the shots. Uh, he also scored a goal. Why is he being so hard on himself? I do, like, gotta commend him for being like, hey, the team is what the ones doing all the work. It's for everyone, especially the kids. Right, let's call it there, everyone. That was great. Thanks very much. <laughs> what the fuck is going on? The hell was that? Oh, hello, Ted. Uh, so hello, sorry, Rebecca. I just bring biscuits. I also have a very special surprise guest. Oh, how exciting. Check out my reaction to Fall Guy. Or The Fall Guy. She was in that. That's why I brought that up. You can keep them well manicured mitts of yours wherever you like. Yeah. Oh, my God. You're Ted's mother. Winner, winner, BF Skinner. Oh. Mom, this is my boss, Rebecca Welton. Rebecca, this I like that she didn't even need an introduction to figure that out. I can't believe I'm finally getting to meet the woman who created one of the nicest humans I've ever met. This one popped out and immediately asked the doctor if he needed anything. <laughs> that doesn't make any sense. Babies can't talk, and nor do they understand empathy. Uh, Dottie, I'm sorry. It's interesting. When he's confronted with his own mannerisms, he's, like, very walls up about it. That sounds exactly like some shit he would say. Where are you from? Sorry. Oh, I thought you said sorry. I did too. <laughs> are you sure you don't want a kebab, Mama Lasso? Oh, no, thank you, Danny. It must be so lovely having your mother visiting, Ted. Oh, yeah, that's great. Oklahoma. Oh, no, it's weird. <laughs> nah. Gotta love this. If you can give your mum one lovely moment, you know, memory to take back home. When you've won. Yeah, all right. Thanks, boss. I thought I was going to see a man ride a horse. Oh, I didn't know a girl said that when they got to pee. <laughs> no, Ted, I'm What? <laughs> I, what? I've never heard that. I'm Trent Crim. Oh, hello, Trent. Hello. I was wondering if I could uh, just have a little chat with you about that. Trent, your hair is fabulous. Are it you, really is. It's you? just styling. Nah. Van Damme. Uh, the fuck? Oh, his nose. Danny fucked him up hard. Or else I'd die. <laughs> <laughs> it does make you look very stupid. Oh, wow. Thank you, Young Moss. Oh, you want to take a crack, Jamie? I think it's more important to be safe than to look cool. What is up with Jamie, man? Oi! Chop! <laughs> now! That's great. He's like, the fuck is wrong with you? Talk! He is in trouble. Shouting is Roy's love language. Oh. I mean, it can be both. It's been both. 
it's 50 50. we got to see you on saturday so we need you to be the prickiest prick you've ever been in your little prick life you understand <laughs> so i don't want you <laughs> whoa Ugh. what is wrong i don't know 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 are you fucking dying or some shit <laughs> I feel like the guy in the Red Bull commercial who's, who's pushing that big rock up the hill, but but he's lost his wings, Roy. I feel like I've lost my wings, Roy. <laughs> Where the fuck are my wings, Roy? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I should be upset, but like, God, that needs to be a clip if it is not, and I need it for a reaction gif. Good God, yes. Where the fuck are my wings, Roy? <laughs> Oh my God. Wow, where is this coming from? Our new striker looks just like your mom. That is my mom. That was a joke. Yeah, he is off, man. What is time, Higgs Bosom? What's up? So this morning- Oh, Higgs Bosom, nice. Waiting tables in Tooting. Did he just say Tooting? Tooting. Y'all got a town here called Tooting? Tooting, yes. <laughs> Damn, this place is great, right? <laughs> Pretty sure he'd come back if invited. What do you think? Well, I do believe in second chances, Ted. That's why I'm still married and all my sons are alive. Hey, Roy, would it bother you if we brought Nate back? Wait, so wait, hold on. What did he forgive about the wife? Look, I've got to do something. Everything all right? I just come down with a case of the none of your fucking business. <laughs> Let's go. Oh, it was the bar mitzvah. That's right. It was the bar mitzvah. This is your mom. Oh, it is so nice to meet you. Oh, friends don't shake hands. Oh, friends. Oh. Aww. Oh, weirdo beardo. Laddie daddy. Weirdo beardo. That is perfect. Why is this? What is wrong with Ted, man? Hello. Oh, what brought him here? Maybe he's like, Keely, maybe you need to talk to Jamie. I need your help with Jamie. No. <laughs> I tried to do it myself, but it's all that emotional shit you're good at. You want me to Jamie? Yeah, and you look nice. Let's not fixate on the Jamie thing. Um, both of you. <laughs> Thank you. Aww. Mm. <laughs> What in the world? That was an awkwardly cute little moment. Had my heart ripped out of my chest, stomped into a pulp, and dragged to the town square for everyone to ridicule. Oh, sweetie, that's okay. You'll meet somebody. No, I'm in love. <laughs> they fuck you up. Yeah, mum and dad, they may not mean to, but they do. Aww. Man ends on misery to man. It deepens like a coastal shelf. Get hurt as early as you can. Don't have any kids yourself. Wow, hitting him with that poem. That was a good one, though. <laughs> hey, Ted. Oh, shit. How long was he? I didn't know you were almost a drummer in Coldplay. Oh, yeah. It's true. It's amazing. <laughs> what? <laughs> is it that she, like, keeps inventing these stories that make him seem more grandiose than he really is? She keeps embellishing these stories to where none of what she tells anybody is really what actually happened, but a version of it that makes it sound better than it is? I don't know. Yeah, do you want to come to Manchester with us? Uh, I don't know. I mean, coming all the way to England and not seeing a soccer match is kind of like going to Rome and not going to church or getting your pocket picked. <laughs> you, uh, you ever thought about talking to someone? Oh, no, that is not my cup of tea. And you know I love my tea. Good night, sweetie. Thank you for the bed. You're welcome. No. Hey, hot dog. Y'all joining us today? Well, we're all in this together, Ted. So I received a strongly worded text from Nora demanding I stop using my private jet. Why? The environment. <laughs> Goddamn environment. <laughs> Goddamn environment. Thank you. I, 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 I. <laughs> Do you know who this is? Your son? Mm. This man, right here, went from kit man to assistant coach to manager to top of the league, and now he's my head waiter. <laughs> Was it drugs? I don't drugs. I get it. No, no, no. I just, I just like working here. And that's my girlfriend. Why does she stop, stop disappearing? Why does she keep doing that? Definitely drugs. Oh yeah, definitely. But which ones? <laughs> God damn it. 
Can I come in? Y yeah, yeah, sure. Come in, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, what's up? Yeah. I just wanted to come and see how you're doing. Bro, I told you. <laughs> <laughs> you've got a lot going on right now. Mm, there's a lot going on, yeah. This is the first time you've played back home since you left. Ooh. Oh, is that it? What is your dad? I not think of that, yeah. And I know a lot of people are shit talking your hair online. What? Think about it. If you guys win tomorrow, then you will be on the precipice of achieving everything that you've ever dreamed. Oh my god. Oh shit, sorry, Jamie. And that's some pressure you just threw on him. He didn't even remember the dad thing. Gotta go with Jamie. Yeah, I fucked it. Made it worse. <laughs> Wicked ass shot. And what a blue ass moon, man. What the fuck? the fuck is he? I don't know, you've lost him. You said he went down there. I did not, you said that. He knows they're following him and he's gonna jump scare them. You lost Jamie Tart. I can't lose Jamie Tart. Are you Jamie Tart? <laughs> well, I'm Jamie Fart. Screw you, dickhead. Bridge. Yeah, who are you? Say you're gonna fuck you up tomorrow. Yeah, you fart, you little twat. Yeah, it's not for you, yeah. pussy. Oh no, my gosh. Georgie, we got visitors. What was that, love? Someone at the door? Hello, mummy. Oh. <laughs> I'd like to introduce your tequila and this airy pricks, Roy. Hi. Hey, you. <laughs> what was that, Roy? He kept saying that it was blonde, but I'm like, it's fucking walnut mist, mate. Yeah, obviously. Yeah. He's doing a lovely job, it's dead natural. <laughs> What do you think? Mmm, really yummy. <laughs> Roy! Have you ever considered doing a happy hour at the Taste of Athens? I've literally never thought about work the second after leaving work. <laughs> I wish I could do that, man. You're a coach. I want you back in Richmond. You should go. No. Didn't really end too well for me there. I think a lot of that was my fault. Well, it was... It's all my fault. Mmm. Look, after this season, I'll, I'll try and get another coaching job, just just not at Richmond. Mm -hmm. Yeah? You hungry? You want food? Club him with it. <laughs> he needs to snap out of this. They're so cute, man. They make people thirsty. I'm giving away what? 5p on up and taking in five quid on beer. That's small, right? Why am I the only Dude is a wonder kid of everything, man. He will turn everything into an... Uh, an efficiency match. I always did what I did because fuck him, you know, and, and now that I don't give a shit about him, it's like, you know when some guys can't make the willies go hard? <laughs> I got that, but it's like I got it in my soul. He lost his drive. His drive was his hatred of his father, trying to prove him wrong, trying to succeed. In spite of him. Yes. Yo! Many have come and gone over the years. Henri, Gerard, Ronaldo. <laughs> but Roy Kent always remains. Oh, <laughs> pies are done. Excuse me. That is a do. Oh! <laughs> That's not weird. <laughs> That's not weird at all. <laughs> oh my God! But yeah, it's he's he's got to find a new reason to to soar. You've ended up being who you are so that you can prove him wrong. And you are amazing. No. You're not lost. My sexy little baby. <laughs> you're just not sure which direction you're going in. Yet. No. Ah, this is fucking weird. You and me, sitting on Jamie Tart's childhood bed. It's pretty weird. I don't want to be friends. You don't? I don't want to be just friends. Wait. What are you guys think we should probably get? <laughs> Shit. You need to go? Yeah. He just needed to talk to his mom. That is, that is so weird. <laughs> it was great to meet you. Mom for the ride. This way, See you later. Mm. Love, love you. <laughs> he 
you is just like, love you. <laughs> That's funny. Guess what comes around goes around. What goes around comes around. Sorry, fuck that up. God damn it. Barbecue songs. Aww. Uh oh. He stopped it, but it was triggered by that. Huh. I don't know. It's like part of him, like with his distancing with his family and his son, his, his divorce and all this sort of stuff. Like, I don't know. Homecoming here. I don't know. It's it's stirring that pot. Welcome on, dickhead. <laughs> Perhaps not the homecoming he might have dreamt of. You got this, man. Oh, <laughs> he really wants to. Yes. Oh, that's interesting because he's seen what Nate's seen. What's wrong with Higgins? Nice. God, man. What is this, man? Interesting that we haven't seen his dad at all. Maybe we're just supposed to know he's out there, but the they couldn't get the actor back. Another one. Oh. Hell yeah, man. Oh no. We'll check in on him. All right. You two, do me a favor. Heal him. <laughs> City looking for the equalizer. And Oriano shoots. Van Dam is there. And there again. God damn. Whoa. <laughs> this is some hardcore fucking bong. I'm going to need a word, mate. In my office, yeah? Yeah. I love that. Oh, is he going to fire him? He's like, you got to get out there. You got to stop this. Am I getting promoted? Mm, they, quite the opposite. Go. Figured. Jade said if I didn't fire you, she was going to report me to the... Oh, I can't say who because then you know what I've done. But... Oh, wait. What? <laughs> That's a whole thing I would love to unpack. Richmond are playing with a keeper. They've got a brick wall in front of the goal. No, Arlo. That's a person. I can see his arms and legs and his hideous mask. My God. <laughs> Oh my God! These commentators. What you looking for up there, James? Looking for my dad. I can't find him. He's freaking me the fuck out. Yeah, I get that. It's like when you don't know where Freddy Krueger is, because you know it's the second he's gonna pop up out of nowhere and stick that knife hand of his right in your face. Yeah, Freddy Krueger is fucking terrifying. Yeah, childhood. <laughs> and as we all know, hurt people hurt people. Sometimes they just do it with their knife hands. <laughs> Truth, I guess. Y'all talk since then? Nope. So is he just taking a breather to scan the to scan the uh, bleachers? You know, Jamie, if hating your pops ain't motivating you like it used to, it might be time to try something different. Just forgive him. Fuck, I ain't giving him nothing. Mm -mm, no, you ain't giving him anything. You choose to do that. You're giving that to yourself. Aww. Come on. Okay. Yeah, yeah. How you feel? Yeah. Yeah, I feel good comps, yeah. Ooh, we sure? <laughs> or were we lying? Mostly the painkillers and the adrenaline, I think, but, but yeah, it's not helped, yeah. Good. All right, get your buns out. No. Okay, okay. Come on. <laughs>
My God, man, Van Dam is on this shit so hard. Oh, that's astonishing control from Tark. Ooh, that was sick. Tark cuts inside. And again. Oh, he's untouchable. Oh, did he take it himself? Hell yeah. He's like, screw the passing, fuck you guys. And Richmond with a late substitution. Adam by Jerry. No. Tart makes way and listen to this response from the city supporters. An ovation for a visiting player who is also one of their own. You oh. hear this every day. Come on, just think of what it means for Tart to hear this and what it means for his family. Oh my god! Oh my god! <laughs> He's a tough kid. His dad would have been proud. Did his dad die? Or just didn't make it? Oh, or is his dad in rehab? Oh, shit. Oh. Wow. That I did not see coming. You're a tough guy to beat, man. <laughs> uh, don't worry about the wins or losses. Just help these guys be the best version of themselves on and off the beach. This at the end is the most important thing. No. <laughs> Hell yeah. No. <laughs> no. God damn. <laughs> Will is gone. Be good stuff, man. Hey, listen, man, I want to say I'm proud of you. You, you played so well today, man. Oh, I appreciate no. it. Oh. Thanks, hey. Actually, hold on a sec, coach. Come here. Check this out. <laughs> oh, wait. Uh, no, no, I know you've already seen it. I just don't know if you watched the whole thing. After we came in, Nate had to hide under my desk here for like three whole hours while we were all hooping and hollering oh, and wow. all around him. We all split. He thought he was in the clear. And boom, cleaning crew shows up. Well, after they leave, he crawls out. His legs just gotta be jelly. He goes to check the doors, but they're all locked. <laughs> oh man, that son of a gun. Had to climb out the window here just to get out of the building. I hope that either all of us or none of us are judged by the actions of our weakest moments, but rather by the strength we show when and if we're ever given a second chance. If only they check the security tapes of him coming in and uh, fixing up everything. Fuck. <laughs> he pulled a Roy. Oh, I I get it. I I really get that. Yeah, it was fucking amazing, huh? <laughs> yes. Hey. Yeah. Like my dad was never like an asshole like that. But he was just never there, actively just never there. You know, so like it, it created this whole on thing for so many years. Seeing Jamie kind of get to a point that I got to not that not that long ago. Is it, 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 I, it just hits, it connects real hard, man. I don't know if you heard, but Derek fired me today. That bastard! Yeah. But it made me realize that even though there's only one match left, I have to go back to Richmond to make things right. No. Currently writing Ted an apology letter, it's 60 pages, but I'm just- 60 pages! <laughs> He's gonna be at your door. Oh my God. Oh, worse. <laughs> Beard is inviting him back, but in, he needs it to be Ted. Oh, he's coming back anyway. He's the swing vote. He's the one they need. Yeah, kill me. <laughs> Ted and I met playing college football. After school, we went our separate ways. He was dating Michelle, got into coaching, and I got into prison. Oh. When I got paroled, I had no money. Family didn't want me. I had nowhere to go. So I looked up Ted, he took me in, fed me, let me crash on his couch. And in return, I stole his car. I didn't get far. And I would have gone straight back to prison. 
if Ted didn't come down there and convince those cops that he gave me the car. Just like in Les Mis. Our story is very similar to Les Mis, yes. <laughs> you went to prison. Oh. Yes. For stealing a loaf of meth. And then I Wait, a friend, loaf? Who forgave me and gave me a job and a life. So to honor that, I forgive you. I offer you a job. <laughs> the life part's up to you. Thank you. <laughs> You sure you don't want to headbutt me? I think it might make us feel better. Monday, 10 a.m. What's wrong? Why are you here? What do you mean? If you got something you need to say to me, I'd appreciate if you just went ahead and said it. Stop! I just want to spend my last night in London with my son and make sure everything's all right. Well, thank you for cooking dinner, both of them. No, oh, you're welcome. And fuck you for not wanting to talk. Excuse me? Oh. Thank you for flying all the way here to come see me. And fuck you for not telling me you were coming. Thank you for all the small, silly little things you did for me as a kid, you know, like hiding notes in my lunchbox or, uh, putting googly eyes on the fruit at the supermarket just to make me laugh. And fuck you for not working on yourself or seeking help after we lost dad. And for not talking to me about it either. Just glossing over the whole thing and acting like everything was all right. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. I didn't know what to do, Ted. So I pretended I was okay. Well, thank you for the apology. And fuck you for making me think I had to pretend to. All right, I, I appreciate you uh, sharing all this with me. I just wish you hadn't carried it around for so long. Yeah, okay. And um, you're right, Ted, I do have something to say to you. She's not, she's dying, isn't she? Your son misses you. Yeah, I know. Or not. <laughs> I miss him too. It's like I'm scared. Hey, get close to that little boy. Oh, honey, why? Because I know he's gonna leave. No, 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 no. You know, that is the thing about being a parent. Sometimes you lose, and sometimes you win, but most of the time you just tie. Oof. All we can do is keep playing. Thank you. Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. I'm sorry about that. I... <sighs> You know what? Let me make it up to you, okay? While well, you take a seat and I'll, uh, you know, I'll serve you dinner for once, okay? Okay. She's alive. I thought she did all this impromptu shit as like a last ditch bucket list thing, which is why she was avoiding letting him know and all this other stuff and just the conversations, but it was just her, her entire tactic in life. Thanks. Oh, Hi. shit. Sorry to just show up like this. Um, I need some advice. Okay. Can we come in? We. Oh, what in the world is this? <laughs> Whoa. No. Oh. And just thank you. <laughs> P.S. Fuck you anyway. <laughs> oh. Hey, hey, boss. Oh, hello, Ted. What is she doing here? Do you know what time it is? 9.30. Uh, or half nine, as you folks say over here for some goofy-ass reason. <laughs> now, this is that time of year when I come down here and reveal something. You. Oh yeah, shit. That? That's right. Maybe I should guess this year. No, 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 that's silly. Yeah, no, you just go ahead and tell me. Go on, let her rip. We've murdered Rupert. I've got nothing. Oh. oh. I really tried as well. I mean, even on the walk over here, I was thinking something would pop into my head, but nope. Mm. Sorry, mm. I got one. When I think of home, I think of a... No! We better fucking see what that was. I need to know. Is he quitting? 
Is it that he's quitting? Is it that he's going back home? I mean, next episode's the last episode of the, the show, so I don't know. I don't know if he stays. I don't know if he goes back. I don't know if this is because this is him running away from everything that he left behind while also dreading and fearing that you confronting and losing his son by being over here. It's just this deflection thing that his, him and his family have always done. That he's been fighting this entire time. But I want him to stay here. The thing is, whether he stays or goes, his impact here, I think, would will carry on, you know, without him. I think everything that he's done to build these this team up, to build up these coaches, both Roy and especially Nate, who is back. I was hoping that was going to be what we were coming in on when we were coming into this, uh, coming back into the locker room there was that he was going to be met with Nate showing up early for his new day back or his first day back. Oh my Lord, dude, that entire revelation about Beard honestly makes so much sense. That connects so many dots. He was so angry at Nate, I think mostly because it reminded him of what he had once done and everybody else coming around on him and all this kind of stuff just frustrated him even more about what he had done to Ted in their early years. And hearing his side of the story and him breaking down that all to Nate and then forgiving him for it because that's what happened to him. And it would be a dishonor to Ted's memory, memory like he's gone, to what Ted did for him if he refused to do that for someone else in turn. And it all came down to that. While Nate was waiting on Ted to be the one to reach out, Thankfully, though, this wake-up call from Jade pushed him away from needing that and motivated him to take the charge regardless. The team was already fine with it, and, you know, all things considered, you know, the, the offer was on the table, and he was going to, at least at the end of the day, if Ted didn't come out here, he was the one that was going to approach, thanks to what Jade did. Again, she's awesome. Like, their whole thing, the way we're from where we started to where we are now, is so adorably cute, you know, at first glance, Nate being Nate, you know, she she didn't think much of him. But thankfully, one thing that came out of it of his West Hamness was that he was able to use that as an icebreaker to keep pursuing her and at least caught her interest. And after that, once she finally got to know him, and I think this is the important part, once she actually gave him a chance and got to know him, look at what they've become, man. But I love how much of a champion of him that she's become. You know, it, it's it's beautiful. It's so emo. It just hits me so hard, man. And then just Nate's whole redemption arc. Tad rushed in the last bit. Well, not so much his part. His all flowed nicely. It's all the things that echoed around it from the ripples of that that I didn't quite understand. And maybe this interaction will click if we get to see the conversation that Rebecca, Rebecca, and I don't know the other one's name the secretary, the assistant, and maybe that'll fill in the gaps of what shattered Rupert's reality that day because they talked about the news circulating was that there was a domestic problem in the office. That was what people thought Nate was wrapped in with. There was, but it had nothing to do with why Nate left. It was probably because she found out what he went out to do with Nate, got pissy, even though it's just this whole cycle that keeps on happening and she probably went to Rebecca, ratted him out. The chain mate brings us back to the OG, to Rebecca. Rupert's spiraling right now. Like we saw him like in a very vulnerable position last time we we checked in on him. And I think we're we're just get we're we're gonna fill in those gaps probably in the next episode. So I don't know exactly where that's gonna go. So we beat Man City. I thought they were going to be the end all be all. Like we had our personal feud and rivalry with West Ham. But I, I thought the end all be all was to beat the big bear, the big beast at the end of the dragon at the end. But we took them out right now. So I guess that just leaves because we still need to face West Ham one more time. And I guess that's going to be the next episode because we know there's one more game. I don't remember if they said in this episode who the final match is going to be with. It leaves us with nobody other than West Ham, right? And West Ham's not going to have Nate. It's not going to have uh, Rupert in any level of like stable mind, I'm sure. I mean, that's our white whale, right? That's been our rival the entire time because of that whole thing from season one to now between Rebecca and Rupert and letting that go. And speaking of letting it go, Jamie letting go of his hatred of his father, finding a new drive to carry forward, no longer about proving him wrong or being great in spite of him or to piss him off or whatever, 
or to give him no reason and no ammunition to use against you to be a dickbag. He's found a way to stoke that fire without needing any of that. It's very much so, if you guys have seen Avatar The Last Airbender, and I'm, I won't go into any specifics, but there is a character whose power is driven by their anger and their, their past is rife in things that have always pushed them in very much the same way as Jamie is. They were always kind of the underdog. They were always the one people doubted and cast out and didn't really give any mind. So they worked harder and harder and harder because they had to, if they wanted any kind of success or attention whatsoever, their life became a fight. But once they realized that they didn't need to prove that to them anymore, they grew above that desire to prove this toxic person in their life right or wrong or whatever, or to please them. Once they turned it inward, they were conflicted on where their motivation would come from next. And it was all about finding that new motivation, that new spark. You know, there was a lull where they, just like with Jamie, he, he was like, I, I, I feel like I'm, I'm stuck here. Like he compared it to being impotent, like he, you know, like unable to get an erection, you know, but for the soul, like he just felt like he was adrift and he needed to find a way to get his motor running again. No matter what, Keely and Roy, who again, another transition from where we started off to now that is just beautiful. And I, I think the hand holding is a sign because they didn't really address it again in the episode is about when Roy was like, I can't, I just, I don't want to just be friends. She held his hand, then Jamie interrupted. I hope they just mend that by the end of the season. I think they're great together. I think they've both learned and grown from where they were that caused the problems in the rift to begin with. I think we're past that, fix it, let's move on. All in all, despite all their involvement and the way that they are coming together, you know, I mean, she's his ex. He used to hate Jamie. Now he's so concerned about Jamie because he just sees himself in him. And then all these other things he's taking under his wing, like he, he cares about Jamie now. And he's like, I don't even give a shit about this. I know you know him, you dated him. So like, let's do it together. And they still weren't able to do it. He just needed to talk to his mom. And then mother's coming into this with Ted. Again, Jamie's got a little bit of an interesting relationship with his mother and they acknowledge that. And funny enough, Roy was like, hey, <laughs> when Jamie was at his house the other day or not his house, his sister's house and being like, hey, to his sister, funny little like way to kind of call that back. But anyway, Ted's mom's showing up and him having to address part of the root cause of a lot of his issues, his deflections, his personality, because he was seeing exactly who he used to be pre-therapy in her, in the way she talked about things, the way she you know, had her little anecdotes to the point where like it, she was saying stuff he would say in a heartbeat if she wasn't here. He's the one poking holes in all of her little phrases and metaphors and little jokes and all that kind of stuff. Because like he's just like, ah, ew. it's just like holding up a mirror to him about the shit he would do. And then it made him angry about all of these root causes that caused him to have these breakdowns to begin with because he never, he was basically raised to never face his problems, to just deflect, not seek help, not try to do anything. But until he met Sharon, he was just really, really stuck. And now he's just like, why, you fucked it up. He's like, thank you, but fuck you. Thank you, but fuck you. I love that whole scene, that whole thing, that breakdown. Cause sometimes that's just how things go. And I like how she hit him with that whole thing. It's like, hey, sometimes the best thing you can do as a parent, sometimes we win, sometimes we lose, but most of the time we just tie. You just gotta keep on playing. And that's what he's been doing his entire life still, in spite of everything else. He still needed to address this. But at the end of the day, she came here to deliver that message that your son misses you. The cold, hard reality of it. And you can't really run from that anymore. So I, I wholly expect him to move back home at the end of the season. But if he does, the team's in Roy's hand. He is an amazing coach now. You got Nate, the best coach out there, man. If he can take the lessons and the ideology and the same love, care, and appreciation of the players and the sport that Ted instilled into him. Now that he's bulldozed through all of his issues, not all of them, not completely, but now that he's on the up and up, now that he's coming back around, now that he's confronted these things, seen these things within himself, and that he's healed and found himself a little bit more clearly, he can carry that on in, in a great way. I think Richmond will be in great hands if Ted does leave. Will Beard stay? Will he go? Who knows? He's still in love with Jane, so who freaking knows? Oh my good golly gosh, this was such a good episode. And I love the feel good of it. It was a little goofy, it was a little cheesy, it was a little bit of a quick 180, 
But when Jamie went out there on his uh, busted ass foot and still scored a goal all on his own, he was like, fuck you guys. And he did it without passing, you know, the whole thing that's been succeeding and getting them to win all these games this entire time, this 15 game win streak, holy shit. And he was like, I'm gonna play like Jamie used to play. And he did it, he ran it, he got the ball, took it all the way to the goal all by himself, gave them a big old middle finger and that earned their respect. And then they cheered for him in the end. Goofy, cheesy, but I loved it. And then he's like, all right, I sh proved myself. I fought through the pain. I need to sit down before I really screw up my foot. Oh my lordy, lordy, lordy. So many great little moments in this episode. This show, barring a couple little, maybe pacing hiccups in this season particularly, is amazing. Like masterclass, feel good television with these just deep little character studies and just beyond hilarious. And I don't know, man, I love that it's just this journey through emotional vulnerability, healing, and perseverance at the end of the day. I'm gonna be so sad to say goodbye to it next week. But that said, guys, what did you think? Sound off the comments. Let me know your thoughts down below. We'll carry on the conversation after the video. Hope you enjoyed the reaction. If it did, leave a like, drop a comment, subscribe if you're not already. Remember to see the full length reaction, you check it out over on Patreon or if you got Marvel channel, get you access as well. And speaking of before we go, I want to shout out our channel legends, Manny Share, Ryan Karen, York, Horace Gall, Melito, Robert Unguiono, Jeffrey Hill, Jake Cottrell, Eric Official, Casey Wood, Russell Crockett, Justin Smith, Amy Beck, and Zachary. Thank you guys so much for continued support. That's it for this video, guys, and we'll see you all in the next one. Take care, everybody.